In this video, we're going to cover the Surface Properties window, which allows you to control the placement of textures upon BSP surfaces. Note, only BSP surfaces and not static meshes or any other type of surface. So let's begin by showing where you can get access to the Surface Properties window. If I click somewhere in my perspective viewport, or really any viewport, just to put focus there, I don't have to have any surfaces selected, I can press the F5 key, and that will bring up the Surface Properties window. Or as an alternative, I can go under the View menu, and choose surface properties. Now before we really start going through this window and uh, showing what it can do, now that you've seen it, I'm going to slide it out of the way for just a second and uh, let you take a quick look at this level. I have a radio tower static mesh up against a wall and uh, I'm going to take this back wall and I'm going to apply another material to it. So let me click on the show uh, generic browser button and I'm going to change over to the ASC walls package which I've already loaded in. Let's make sure that I can see materials and I'll scroll way up to the top and I'm looking for a uh, particular material we're going to use ASC Walls BSP Plaster A05 and here you can see that we have a nice texture which so, uh, shows some cool uh, Asian calligraphy on the wall and uh, it's, it's kind of repetitive it's uh, tiling too many times and not placed very well. Well, that's where the Surface Properties window comes in. It allows us a means to adjust the layout of this texture uh, using a variety of tools. So let's begin with the pan and rotation groups located at the top of this window. Now, I'm going to have to ask you to bear with me as I am very limited on screen space. So you'll be looking over here on the left-hand side to actually see what the texture is doing while I click on each of these buttons. But we have pan in the U and V directions. And generally speaking, U is going to be in the horizontal direction and V is going to be vertical, though that's not always going to be the case. So if I click on the one button... You can just, actually, we need to select the surface first, Zach. So make sure you have a surface selected, and then you can start moving a texture around. That's okay. You're allowed to snicker at me a little bit on the other side of the video if you want to. If I click on the one button for you, if you look really closely, you'll notice the texture is just trucking along each time I click the mouse. It's moving off to the left. If I hold down the shift key and click, it is now moving in the opposite direction. And there's a little tip here that I swear I didn't notice the first several times I used this window. I didn't even notice this was here. It said hold shift while clicking the above buttons to affect surfaces in the opposite direction. I thought I found that out on my own and that I was really cool. And then it turns out it was saying it right there in front of me. Anyways, so you have different numeric values which control how far the texture is going to jump each time you click the button. If I click on 4, you'll notice the texture is moving a lot further or farther. If I click on 16, it goes even farther. 64, it's really jumping, so much so, in fact, that you almost don't see the motion at all because it's jumping like one full uh, uh, texture pan, if you will. And then I have custom, which allows me to set a specific amount. So I could say 32 and click OK, and it's going to jump exactly that much. Now, V is going to do the same thing, but it's going to move the uh, texture vertically up and down in this case. So uh, if I click on the one button here, you'll notice the texture is gradually moving downward. If I hold down shift and click on these buttons, I'm in fact moving it back up. Now to the right of this, we have the rotation group, so I can rotate the texture 45 degrees and continue rotating it around as many times as I want to. If I hold shift, I'm rotating now clockwise instead of counterclockwise. I can also rotate 90 degrees if I have that urge. I can rotate to custom degrees, so we could say maybe... 20 degrees, so there is, there's a, a nice, uh, I mean, that looks great. I think we should leave the texture just like that. Uh, let's see if we can do a negative 20, and there we go. That'll line it right back up. We can also flip it in U and V if we want to. Uh, maybe this has got some writing on it, and for whatever reason, the writing is backwards. We could flip it in U or uh, flip it in V like so. So it's just taking the texture and turning it over. All right, moving down from here, we have the scaling group, and this allows us to control the overall size of the texture. And scaling comes in two fashions. You have simple and custom, which basically amount to uniform and non-uniform. So if we go under simple scaling, all we get is a drop-down, allowing us to choose what size we want to scale. So if we set this to 0.0265 and click apply, 0.0625, I can read, really, promise. So we have these really tiny, tiny, tiny tiles of this texture all over the surface, as you can see here. And I can set it all the way up to 1, which is the default, or to 4, which in the case of this particular wall is going to line up pretty well. Now, that is because this is a 2048 by 2048 uh, texture, and my wall is 1024 by 512. So it just so happens that it lines up really well if I do a uh, 4 scaling. 
Now, if I move over, I have the ability to scale this on uh, based on custom values, so I can scale U independently of V. We could maybe take U and scale that to maybe, oh, I don't know, 6, but then V we can scale to 4, or which will leave it exactly the way it is, and that'll just stretch my texture out horizontally, or we could set V to something like, I don't know, 20, just to show off. There you go. And now you're starting to get all sorts of different effects because we are scaling uh, uh in, well, we're scaling up more vertically than we were horizontally. Now, next to this, we have a relative checkbox, and what this will do is apply whatever your scaling is relative to whatever the scaling already happens to be. So if I keep hitting apply, we will just keep stretching this out further and further. So let me turn that off and actually set this back to uh, texture scaling of 1. We'll jump over to custom, and what I'm going to do is set uh, both of these values to 2. And then we'll check uh, relative, and I'll click apply, and that means each time I apply, I'm actually doubling the size of the texture. So if I click this twice, we actually get that 4x4 four four scaling, which ends up looking pretty good. If you uh, uncheck this, you're actually scaling in absolute coordinates. So if I was to apply again, we go back to 2x2 two two scaling. So there's a quick look at that. Now moving to the right from here, we have the lighting group, a very important group for controlling the overall shadows in your level which uh, I can kind of point out the importance of already. If we take a look at this wall, we have uh, no shadow coming off of this radio tower onto the wall. In fact, there is a shadow there. It's just so scattered that you really can't make it out at all. And we have built lighting in this level. Before we started the video, we clicked the build button. You just don't see a shadow. And that is because the light map resolution of this particular surface is too large. Now, here's the funny thing about light map resolution. If you've never seen it before, if you click on it, you're going to get a drop-down of values. The smaller this number, the more tight and the more refined your shadows are going to be. The larger this number, the less tight your shadows are going to be. And if you think about it, it makes sense, because what you're actually defining is the size of a single point of shadow information. The larger that shadow point is, the more diffused, the softer your shadows are going to be. So, so you, it's almost like you could say that that takes a point of the light map and actually spreads that across 32 units of world space instead right. of... Uh, instead of the other way around. So that way it's like each point on the light map was worth an actual point or scaled up to larger so that you aren't wasting as much texture space. Exactly. So uh, the catch there, I mean, the easiest way to remember it is as you go down the scale, your shadows get tighter. As you go up the scale, your shadows get softer, such to the point where in this particular case, because our radio tower is made out of such fine uh, rods and wires and whatnot, we don't even really see a shadow. So in a case like this, if we wanted to see a shadow on the wall from this radio tower, we would need to set our value really far down. I'm going to set it down to 2. And I might reset it down to one. We'll see. But uh, let's go ahead and rebuild our lighting, which is going to take just a second. So we'll just sit here and let it calculate. I'm hoping it doesn't take more than, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 seconds, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. But it's just building across. Well, it's almost done. This is the part where you need elevator music. Yeah, I know. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'll quit. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. And, oh, you're so close. You're almost there. I can feel it. Big money, big money. Red 24, come on. Or, okay, sorry. And there we go. So let's go ahead and close that. And now we can see a shadow from the radio tower on the wall because this particular surface has a much higher resolution. And just as a side note, if I push this window kind of out of the way, you'll notice that if we select this surface, we see a light map resolution of 2. But if I move the camera and select this surface, it now resets to 32, which is the setting for this surface. Now, don't think that just because the shadows here look a lot clearer that it is a good idea to do this with every surface in your level. In general, you want your light map resolution to be as low as you can possibly get away with. Also, keep in mind that especially in terms of uh, Unreal Engine 3 levels and the kind of games you're, uh, you're going to be used to seeing with games such as UT2004, your levels are going to be mostly made of static meshes. You're not going to be seeing BSP surfaces all that often. And so in some cases, you can save a little bit on your build time and on your light map resolution calculation in general by setting this as high as it'll possibly go for any surface that is completely covered with static meshes. If I knew for a fact that I was never going to see this wall, I wouldn't want shadows to really be uh, considered as any part. So I might even switch off except lights. But at the very least, I would take my light map resolution and crank it way, 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 way down.
Right, just to use as a possible optimization, if you, like you said, if you really can't see any part of the surface, and therefore the light map resolution would be irrelevant. Right. Now, down from here, we have the ability to uh, switch off whether or not this surface will accept lights at all, uh, whether or not it's going to accept dynamic lights, or we can force a light map upon it, even if the, uh, well, actually, no matter what kind of light is striking the surface, we can force it to use mapped lighting solutions. Okay, down from here, we have uh, the alignment options. And just in a quick nutshell, what this is going to allow you to do is to apply different alignment uh, schemes to a particular surface. Very handy if you maybe have messed up your, uh, let's see, if we come in here, we rotate this to 45 degrees, and then we flip it in you, and then we pan it. And we just don't know how to get it back the way it was. We can come in just as an example and choose default alignment and click apply, and that'll put it back exactly the way it was when we first came in and built that surface. So it's kind of like the mighty reset button. Planar is going to project the texture onto the surface in a specific axis direction, and you can choose that direction over here from the drop-down. You can go along the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, or you can uh, choose walls, which will assume that your surface is vertical in nature, or you can choose auto, and that'll let uh, Unreal choose what the best direction to use is, which works, I mean, for the most part, very well. The box alignment is going to project your texture from six, uh, six different directions as if it were onto the uh, surfaces of a box, and face is going to project uh, a single copy of the texture onto each individual face. So that's just a quick look at those. Now down from here we have the lighting channels. Without letting this turn into a great big discussion over how lighting works in Unreal Engine 3, which is something we're actually going to uh, break out into some other video, Essentially, this allows you to determine which lighting channels will be affected uh, or will, uh, will reach this particular surface. So by default, all BSP surfaces are listening for, if you will, the BSP channel. If I uh, have dynamic lights and I want to make sure those dynamic lights are hitting this surface, I could uh, make sure that the dynamic channel is on. Or maybe I've got a light in my uh, level that is only using the unnamed channel, and I want it to hit this surface. I would need to select this surface and make sure that unnamed one or whichever, uh, whichever channel was activated on that light was also activated here on this surface. So with that, that is a uh, quick overview of all of the options within the surface properties window. Again, very important for controlling the placement of textures on a BSP surface. Just uh, do keep in mind that with many levels, especially the, the really good looking epic style, epic quality levels, uh, especially those that you'll see shipping with Unreal Tournament 3, in a lot of cases, you don't often see very much of the BSP surface. So keep that in mind before you spend a lot of time really texturing the daylight out of BSP surfaces in your level. And that will wrap things up for this video.